Welcome, everybody, back to GoSycamores.com. Luke Martin alongside Brian Fritz as we preview the Tennessee game this weekend in Knoxville. Fritzy, we go from a heartbreaker last week to Tennessee, what looked like maybe a heartbreaker for them on Labor Day night, but find a way to win the football game. Yeah, great comeback for Tennessee. Uh, we're able to come back late in that ball game, win a thriller in double overtime, getting the stop on the two-point conversion play finally to beat Georgia Tech. Great come-from-behind win for them. They're riding high, also a short week for them. Uh, Sycamores, you know, I think some questions that they've tried to get answered in practice, maybe at quarterback off that first ball game, and lots of things that they've been working on and hoping to improve from week one to week two, which traditionally is the week where a team makes its biggest improvement is from week one to week two. You mentioned running the football. Georgia Tech did that a few times against Tennessee on Monday night. I think 83 carries as a team is what Georgia Tech had in that game. They run such a unique style. I don't know how much you can really read into that, but if Indiana State's going to have success, I think it's pretty safe to say a lot of it's going to ride on that offensive line and, of course, Lamont Booker. No question. Booker was outstanding in the opener, running for 154 yards, and that's the identity that Coach Mallory and this staff wants to have for this football team is to be a power running team first. Uh, Georgia Tech with the triple option, I think they had 679 yards rushing the other night. But also, they have personnel, and that's a different look for Tennessee. I think you're going to get a much better feel for the Vols' defense in this ball game against Indiana State. And, and as always, it's going to start for the Sycamores with if they're able to block well enough up front to give running lanes to Booker and whoever else may get carries. More than likely, this weekend will be the largest crowd to witness an Indiana State game. You are a part of the last game that was the largest crowd to be a part of at Penn State. The environment that this team is going into, you've been in some big environments like the one at Penn State. Of course, the magnitude of the crowd is a challenge, but what is it about going into those environments and being in the role that we will be in on Saturday and why it's such a challenging one? Well, first off, I think it's a great opportunity for our young men and our players because, you know, deep down, everybody at some point would like to play in an environment like that. Not everybody may always get that opportunity, Saturday, we have that opportunity. Um, you know, I think you just go down there and you really approach it that, again, we want to take care of the things that we can control. I thought we were really good in game one of not committing many pre-snap penalties, typically taking care of our assignments. But how do you do that now in front of 100,000 people? How do you do that when it's difficult to communicate? And this is, you know, going to be indicative of a atmosphere we'll see later in the year in the Dakota Dome, which will be loud. But I don't think it'll be 100,000 people <laughs> loud. So, you know, just I think you approach this game with it's a great opportunity and you understand that, hey, we need to play as well as we can play today and – let the results be what they are, go from there, and try to get better as a football team. I think one thing, too, you pointed out at the beginning, yes, of course, this is going to be a, a really tall task and a big challenge for Indiana State to be able to come out on top at the end of the day in Rocky Top, but they are on a short week. They did have not just a football game that they play, but a really physical, grueling contest on Monday night. Everything seems to be at least for Indiana State to possibly maybe jump in there and have a chance on Saturday. They're getting a lot of help with some of the other extracurriculars if there's a better way to describe it. I, I agree with you. There are a lot of those things that line up in Indiana State's favor. I would even add the fact that Florida is in seven days for Tennessee is another one of those things. However, you still have to go out and block and tackle. And, you know, one of the biggest advantages for the FCS teams when they play the FBS teams, they have more scholarships, the depth becomes an issue. How is Indiana State able to hold up over four quarters against a Tennessee roster that, you know, just because of the number of scholarships they give is, is going to be deeper? No doubt, and you brought that up. And actually, Kirk Herbstreit said in the broadcast, Butch Jones believes he finally has championship depth at Tennessee, and we'll see that on display Saturday in Knoxville. Fritzy and I will be on the air at 3 o'clock Eastern time locally on Terre Haute Radio on WIBQ. You can also listen on the web at GoSycamores.com. For complete coverage on Indiana State at Tennessee, stay locked in right here at GoSycamores.com. Go